Good morning and a super very warm welcome uh, to the kickoff of this series of Nordic Talks. Nordic Talks uh, are organized by my fantastic team uh, at the Royal Danish Consulate General in Istanbul. And we're very honored and happy to be part of this series, which is facilitated by the Council of Ministers, uh, the Nordics. And uh, what better way to start uh, this kickoff than talking about the future? And therefore, I'm super, super happy to welcome today my guest, Thomas Thank Goyen. you, Annette. Thomas is a strategic futurist, a keynote speaker. He's a big rock star, actually. I don't know that, but he actually is. Super big rock star. And uh, he's delivered a lot of TED Talks during the last 10, 15 years. So I'm sure we're in for a wild ride today. So, Thomas, tell me, uh, why is it that it's so important right now that we focus on the future? <laughs> That's a very good question. Thank you so much, Annette, for inviting me. So why is it so important to, um, why is the future so important? And the reason why, the obvious, uh, the obvious answer is, of course, because it's where we're going to spend the rest of our lives. That's where, I mean, the future is important because our business is going to spend the rest of, the li of their lives exactly on the future. So, I mean, um, um, why is it important uh, to think about the future? It is very important because if you don't think about the future, you might not have one. So, uh, Annette, when you ask me that question, uh, uh, we really, really uh, uh, try to, I mean, start future conversations all over the world. And, and the reason why, I mean, is, is that, that when you start talking about the future, uh, what you actually do is you, you, you uh, uh, suspend reality just for a while to create a, a, a safe space where you can actually can talk about preferable futures, where we actually can come together in honesty and, and have trustful conversation about what futures do we imagine. And, and the reason why it's so important is because when, when, when you start talking about the future, um, you, you, you get a language about the future and also you get a perspective. And the long, these long perspectives are absolutely crucial because we live in a, live in a world where we have this short-termism, where we actually we have like this quarter capitalism. We have this where we actually only look uh, uh, a month, two months, half a year ahead. And, and as a futurist, we are very occupied. We're really interested in the long-term uh, changes and transformations that's happening in the world. And because when you get, when you articulate uh, uh, a language about the future and you have... Uh, uh, um, uh, a, prefer a preferable future, actually it can work as, as a compass for st strategic decision making. So in that sense, when you have a future, you also have a long-term uh, perspective uh, that, that provides you uh, the ability to make some good decisions. So about future studies, why the future is important is because we can future-proof our decision making. And one of the, one of the key uh, messages uh, for Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies is if you do not have a strategy of your own, you automatically become part of someone else's strategy. So when you're talking about the future, exactly what, what happens is you empower yourself. You move yourself from a position where you re react to all, all the, I mean, the different changes that is happening to actually to go into a position where you proactively create, co-create a future. And it reminds me, Annette, by the way, when we're here, that I mean, 12 years ago, um, I had one of my first keynote speakers. And back then it was in Copenhagen and with the largest players in, 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 in the businesses. And we had to talk about the future of the internet. And back then everybody was talking about the internet is a, is a decision support system. And I had to go on stage there and I had to say the following message. That we will see a plausible future would be that people would take pictures of themselves of their pets and what they had for dinner and put on the internet and everybody was laughing. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> and, and, and of course now we, now we mean uh, uh, history has told us, I mean has shown us that of course the introduction of uh, social media and so far that it was very mm. much uh, uh, a scenario. But back then it, I mean people were talking about only idiots who do a stupid thing like that. So that brings us to one of the keys is that sometimes futures uh, doesn't really make sense. 
and, and, and we can dismiss it very easily with the current thinking we have, if we apply it. So the future is, in a, in a, in a way, a creative room where you, where you, where you actually can, can eliminate, elim, eliminate the blind spots and create different alternative futures. And that's extremely important. And now I know, um, I, I saw this one uh, going up, she, the, the vision of tomorrow from Denmark. And of course, that's a very bold, bold uh, uh, byline and tagline, but actually when you're a futurist, it's one of the golden, uh, one of the golden rules are that um, we never talk in one vision. We try to teach governments, industries, to think in alternative futures. So it should be the visions of tomorrow, because we have many scenarios going on. And, 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 and often we see uh, that people or companies, organizations, industries, do not think in multiple scenarios, and that's risky business. And now, you know, your dear viewer, uh, wherever you, you, you are, all of us in this globalized world where everything's interconnected, um, have been exposed for the last 10 years about digitalization, mm -hmm. I mean, the use of technology. But what does it actually mean? Just to give you an example, will, will this mean that all our businesses, uh, all our industries are going to be data-centric? So we have a lot of data, and, and, and what all of us has to do is we have to be service providers, and we use that data to, to, in, in, to personalize services. That could be hospital services, energy services, could be a lot of things. All the use of technology means, technology means that digitalization means that we have to put layers on our, exist, our, on our, on our existing uh, business models, giving them new ways to interact with us. These two are two very different scenarios. Data-centric or where mm -hmm. technology and, and digitalization is, is just giving a, a, a new entry point. Very, so these are two different scenarios and both, both of them are plausible. But also if, if you say, well, we have two scenarios now, uh, what, I mean, how do we adapt to change? Will our industry, our governments, uh, our, our organizations, will we, the impact of change, give us, is that little? So we actually have the possibility where we can, can innovate our industries, innovate from inside out, we can innovate new practices, or will the impacts be so, so fierce that, no, you should not innovate, you should adapt to all the changes. That's adaptability uh, scenario. So now we have four scenarios. We have data-centric, we have uh, 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 data-centric, we have uh, 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 digitalization as, as a supplement, we have innovation scenario, we have adaptability scenario. And often what we find is governments, it is industries, have a tendency to put all their initiatives in one bracket, in one scenario. And that is risky business. What we try to teach industries is to say, well, there is something that is valuable and relevant, some activities in all the different scenarios, and that is resilient strategies. And we try and try to help uh, companies and industries to identify these resilient, robust strategies that you can apply in all of the scenarios. Uh, just to give you an example, see if this works. I mean, just to say, we, we are a non-profit organization. We are uh, not financed by any, any states, but we are true believers in the Nordic values, uh, and, and the, it, they are implemented in all, in all we do. 50% uh, of all activities it's, is out there in the world, is outside Denmark. And that's absolutely interesting, and it's, uh, we learn so much uh, from that journey. But just to give you an example, and I can use this because they've been written about it, but these are some of our members. And if you take Toyota, but it could be any manufacturer, uh, they said, well, five years ago, actually, uh, they said, well, how can we uh, uh, get these empowered professional women like yourself, Annette, to buy a Toyota or that kind of vehicle? And of course, that's, that's, we talk about, we live in a world where everything's liquid, liquid segments, and they move all around, so how can we target you? And, and, and one of the things said, well, that's of course a valid strategic uh, uh, question. But we also live in a world where we uh, see, uh, we're part of, uh, of a world that's urbanized into the cities. Sure. We also see that uh, there's some technology, uh, technological shifts that pretty much, you know, self-driving cars, electric cars, uh, all that stuff. Uh, but most importantly, we also see that uh, young people do not get a driving license anymore in the cities. It's, it's really declining. So combining these patterns 
of these identification really push another strategic question forward, and that is, who is going to own the car fleet of the future? And, and, and if you should try to answer that, it would probably be the municipalities or the big industries um, uh, that, that uh, uh, offering mobility as a service, as a commute services. And, and, and just, just, just and the reason why I'm telling you this story, I hope it makes sense, behind the, 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 the screens, um, is because the future studies, when we talk about the futures, is also about creating alternative futures. So what we try to do is we try to capture uh, the signals, we try to see what is, we scan the horizons and put them together to create I mean, new plausible and possible futures. And basically, as, as, as I pointed out in the beginning, I mean, we try for time to help uh, 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 companies and industries um, to, to, to uh, take care of that dilemma that all our experience, all our knowledge is often based on historical fact. But actually what we want to do is we, we, we need to create preferable futures that, that can guide us uh, uh, in the future. So we have to do these future studies. And the future then, I mean, uh, um, we've written this, so there is we try to equip decision makers uh, to act on the future now. So future studies is using futures, using scenarios uh, uh, to future-prove your decision making right now. And now, I, I do hope it makes sense, but now I have an exercise for you. Um, I want you right now to look at your screen, and, and if you take a look at it, this is an old picture. Actually, it's 70 years old, 70 years old. And it was published in American magazine in, in 1950, and it was a group of people, also some artists, uh, that said, well, how are we going to live in the future 2000 and beyond? Try to take a scan of this picture. Try to look at it. Glaze, let your eyes glaze. Um, what do they, what is, what, what did they, what is spot on? What is correct? What did they get? And I'd like to teach you in it a little bit while you uh, viewers look at it. Uh, what is correct here? What, what, I mean, what do you see? Well, I definitely see some kind of conversation, including a screen. Sure. I don't think they had that really in no. the 50s. No, um, they didn't. Uh, and, and screen, I also see some kind of a television, a 3D kind of uh, right over here. screen over there. Yeah, exactly. Ah, okay. But, um, yeah, and, you, yeah. and, and you, for the viewers, absolutely correct, correct. I mean, for the viewers, you can see, well, they call it the Phonovision receiver. You got the 3D color TV. Uh, you have the microwave oven wasn't invented back then. Uh, you have ultrasonic laundry and you have giant size fruit, I mean gene manipulated uh, 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 fruit. You have dust free floors. But when we look at this, there's something missing here. All your viewers uh, uh, try, what, what is wrong? There's something fatally wrong with this picture. There's something wrong with this picture. Try, I'll give you like a couple of seconds. What, what's wrong with this picture? Annette? Hmm. So that's a very good question, Thomas. Uh, but uh, I, I think that's prop. There's maybe something about gender balance, uh, traditional so roles. Absolutely right. <laughs> absolutely right, Annette. There's something about genders, for sure. But also, hmm. where is the multi-ethnic society? Where is I mean? And now, when you look at look at look at, at the house, it's a house. It's not an apartment. Hmm. It's a house. Where is urbanization? And, and, and someone is smoking. Um, and, 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 and by the way, I went to America, I mean, half a year ago, uh, to do a workshop. And in that workshop, I'm just saying that the body mass index was also a little bit different, <laughs> to say. So, so it's something about the health. But I mean, and also, and, and this leads us, actually, we do future studies, what is hard and what is, what is easy. We have innovation maps for technological innovations for the next hundred years. And of course, they're not spot on, and sometimes some industries slow down, but otherwise, that's kind of the easy part. But what is truly hard is culture, mm -hmm. how culture is changing, and that is business culture, that is how we live, uh, it's all the, transform all the transformations in, in the world. And now you talked about genders, right? Mm -hmm. And for sure, they have, re they have like kind of installed an, an, an ideal American 50 family into this technology, uh, uh, technological home, 
And, and when we look at, at how gender has, has evolved, I mean, who could predict this one? Uh, um, for male, um, how, how, I mean, and, 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 and when we look at it, we, some of us can laugh, of course, and say, well, this is really happening. Eh? <laughs> but, but this is happening all over the world. And this is from Turkey, uh, for Istanbul. And you see that, that, that it happens everywhere. So it's a global phenomenon. And, and it just further, in, I mean, uh, uh, when we look at it, it makes sense. And, and in, in, well, now we talked about Toyota before, that people are not taking a driving license. So now mobility is a service. And that is urban mobility alternatives are cannibalizing car ownership. So we see things interconnected. These are, like, the, the are dynamics in our society that, that actually pushes certain agendas forward. One of the things that, that is also very important in, or, or in, we are very interesting in, interested in is how do we as business leaders, as citizens uh, of the world actually look at the future? And we see that, that, that there's three archetypes. There's some people that, is, that have, I mean, they're very oriented about the past and say, well, the future, I really want to go back to the good old days when things were just simpler. Some wish themselves back to the 80s, some is the 90s, and some is, is even further. But actually what they see is the future is a dreadful place. And I just wanted to go back when things were simpler, uh, less complex. And often they say, well, the world outside is, is so un uncertain, so I just want to... Uh, uh, almost, I mean, uh, uh, make a simpler life. And that's okay. And then people, we have a, a group saying, well, we're going to work with the future. If we look at the future, we can't really see it. The future, if I ask them what would, what, what, uh, would be different in 2020, if I ask them uh, that question in 2019, they will say 2020 will be exactly the same as 2019, just with a better weather or something like that. So it means that we these group of people, uh, we need, they need experts or need people to, to mm -hmm. actually create futures for them to engage in. And the last group is the, 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 uh, um, the group that is very future oriented. They say, well, I have this potential inside of myself and I really want to unfold it in new experimental ideas, new business models. I really want to push the, uh, 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 an industry agenda forward. I have some brilliant ideas, want green energy, power to X. I really want to, everything has to be automated, we want to further robotics, artificial intelligence. We really want to push these alternative agendas and current very, very uh, good agendas also. But the main thing is the future, um, or, or we could say the world is as we see it, we do not see the world as it is. And that means when we have these different, uh, 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 different perspectives on the future, how do we align these three perspectives? And that is a tremendous, uh, uh, assignment and it's a challenge because if we don't do it, uh, often they think they have they live in parallel uh, uh, futures or parallel uh, 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 um, worlds. So how do we align them? And that's that's crucial for us because these guys over here are people that's here uh, that have a, 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 an orientation of the past want to conserve what is good and that's a good. They're loyal to the past. And they, they, they don't want to jeopardize everything just for a, a fade. So they are good. So, it, so how do we do it? Because, I mean, another thing is we need to come to terms with is the landscape of the world has changed over the last 10 years tremendously. And when you look at this slide, you can see, well, uh, normally we could just do forecast models. It's a predominantly a physical word. Well, it's, it's normal distribution segments. So we could actually, I mean, it was a linear logic. I mean, if you, get, if you did a good input and put a lot of stuff, sweat into things, you'll get a good output. But now we see we are over here where the world is accelerating, it's much more volatile, much more complex. It's so, I mean, and, 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 and what happens is it's harder to actually to navigate strategically in the world. And often industries and people feel, I mean, I mean where are the refer reference points? Where should we look? to get guidance in the world. In this world where everything is changing, where should we look? What are the, in this mobile world, where it is the stabilities? What can we actually count on? So Thomas, in, uh, in some of your books, you are talking uh, a lot about these megatrends in the world. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we also, of course, in our daily work here about the megatrends and, 
and get them uh, presented to us, but it's really difficult to know what to do with them and why should we actually focus on these megatrends? Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You're right. And, and just, I mean, it's a good question there. Absolutely good, brilliant question. <laughs> and and uh, because um, in the different scenarios, uh, I mentioned before, when we have, we have different futures, mm. megatrends are our certainties. Mm -hmm. It's what we put into these scenarios. So, I mean, to, to be bold with you, I mean, say, well, megatrends are the best on utilized tool to really understand, mm -hmm. really come grasping the global development. And for your viewers, um, you should imagine that you have a globe. And you have a globe uh, here, and we have there's some big, big transformations going on. You know trends. These, these mega trends um, are here for at least 20, 50 years, and they've been here also for 10 years. So they are slowly but steadily are the transforming the face of the earth, almost like tectonic plates. They, we, we, we don't see them, the, the transformations every day, but over time we see them. And, and they're going to be here for a long time. Um, and these megatrends are, are pushing certain themes forward. And, and it, it is actually pathways to the future. And these megatrends are, um, it could be like technolo technological development, it is knowledge society, acceleration and complexity, it is polarization, um, it is uh, uh, individualization, immaterialization, and that one is, is, can be a little bit hard, but it's to say, well, we, we, we don't want more in life, we want better lives, uh, we don't want more industries, we want better industries. We have network societies, we have uh, demographic developments, getting older and older, we, we, uh, uh, um, we live in the cities, we have economic growth, Globalization, we, all of us, is totally interconnected. And if I should challenge you to say, well, please, wherever you sit, take everything away that is not produced locally, I mean, pretty much all of us would be naked right now. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, we are interconnected. We have sustainability as one of the, one of the main agendas uh, in the world right now with the SDGs. We have com commercialization where, where commercial partners are taking over. Uh, public se sector welfare uh, 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 services. We see focus on health, COVID-19, hello. I mean, health has really become, become an issue, really been pushed by uh, COVID-19. And then we have democratization. That means we, we, we need, it's not, it's not democracies, it's about creating transparency, distribute uh, uh, power uh, uh, to uh, uh, out in the systems. And, and, and the reason why, I mean, these mega trends I apparent. I mean, are all ready. I mean, it's there. And, and when I used the, uh, the case with Toyota, it is technological development, it's demographic development uh, that, that gave that question, who's going to own the coffee yeah, of the and future? And sustainability, actually. Of course, and sustainability. Yeah, with the electrification yes. and all Yes, actually, yeah. for sure, yeah. for sure. And, and, and it's kind of interesting because, I mean, so our age, now it's your birthday, and oh. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to I'm not going to disclose uh, your age. For sure. Thank you so much, Thomas. <laughs> but, but, That's uh, but, very nice of you. But the main thing we we we're doing right now also a project called the Future of Humanity, mm -hmm. where we interviewed young people all around the world. And actually, in sustainability, what what's really was so weird for me was that that in the old days when when women were going to choose a partner. They say, well, it has to be hygienic, it has a good job. No, now they say, well, sustainability is sexy. We don't want to marry a guy that, 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 that throw trash all over that is not mm. sustainable. Mm. They don't think about the environment. So it is rooted deeply in us. And that's, mm. that's so, I mean, it gives us really, I mean, I'm very hopeful uh, on behalf mm. of the, the generation that is, that becomes the future mm. eventually. So that, that's absolutely brilliant. But one thing here is, is crucial is, when you have all these mega trends, you cannot just go and say, well, some of them, this one, I mean, I don't like it, and then go out of the picture and say, well, I, 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 I hide from it, and then come back like, like four years ago and say, oh, now it's over. It doesn't happen like mm. that, that. So just to, to, to round it off, I'm just saying, well, that we have to understand that in order for us to become good decision makers, to really put uh, the future in play. We have to, there's something that enable the future. And that's all the mega trends you saw. Technologies enable us to uh, see, look at the drive, drives, drives uh, 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 the future. It's a catalyst of technology. It's a super enabler. So it, it allows us to do a lot of things. But there's also some blockers. Mm. 
that that is, can, can be our old ways. It can be regulatory mm -hmm. affairs. And, and the future is, is created in that, in that friction field of different forces of, in the, there's some possibilities that, that is new, we can actually go, go and do. Um, and, and, and the blockers, and sometimes the blockers are, we don't have the competencies. We have to buy in uh, uh, the competencies. So therefore we have to go into strategic partnerships from people around the world mm -hmm. to actually to, 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 uh, uh, um, to be able to use these uh, new opportunities that, that, that is happening. And, and one of the things I just want to, want to say is, is when you look at it, we see when we go into industries that many of them has a steep playing field. So this is what we do. But actually, actually, the playing field, the future playing field looks like that. And when you're going to, to create strategies, um, we want to, to, to uh, push you over to this future playing field where you have so much more options. Um, and, and, and just this, this short-termism over here, when you, this perceived playing field, um, we all know Netflix, of course, and, and, and said, well, uh, this is probably one of the famous quotes, <laughs> In, in 2018, Netflix are not even on the radar in terms of competition. And, 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 and see, they were here. Mm. And uh, so in that sense, we, we encourage really that we challenge uh, the way your mindset, how you perceive the world, because the world is as you see it, you don't see the world as it is. So we try to create this shift in, mind, in mindsets. But, and one of the things is, of course, take t uh, technologies. Technologies is a huge mega trends and, and actually I mean are transforming the entire world. And, and just to just to give you like a, a, a view of of the transitions, sometimes you have to go in different. I mean, an, an industry all of us know. And just just let's take this one: evolution of the bookstore. Right? I remember that. Do you remember this? Yeah. And then, oh, that that was that <laughs> was so nice. But see what happens uh, seven years after the bookstore was like this: Amazon and it was and and and, and and we just took three years additional. Mm -hmm. So within 12 years, the business models and the industry has changed three times. And that just to say this acceleration of technology is happening all over the world. And mm -hmm. we, 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 we tack it with the fourth industrial revolution. It just means automation is here and it's pre it, it is going everywhere. There's no boundaries that we can see. Uh, automation takes place across all industries. And, and, and what, Im what amplifies this further is we have some new technologies. I'm not going to go through all, uh, uh, all of them, but these are new, so it's not gonna, going to stop. So in order for, for, uh, um, uh, uh, for us to, to utilize these technologies, right, we of course have to go into like industrial partnerships because we cannot do everything ourselves. These are so complex, we need these competencies and know-how and, and commercial maturity to, to open up our, our industries and our, uh, our businesses so we actually can use these uh, uh, um, technologies. And when you apply technologies um, to different sectors, for instance, health, that's one of the biggest uh, uh, mega trends. And you know, healthcare is such a, such a course in every, every corner of the world. And, and one of the problem is all over the world is you have to go into the cities. So how do we combine technologies for, for improving healthcare. And first, uh, Den uh, there's a Danish case called QLive said, well, we can actually with, with just a mobile phone, and, and, and that, is, that is all over the world, pretty much, and with a little, little scanner, we can actually move the first phase of healthcare out on the countryside. Mm -hmm. We can actually make this accessible. So instead of having like hospitals as a, as a key entry points, I mean, point of care is everywhere. And it's improved care. Uh, so in that sense, technology actually combines with, with, with health, actually changes the entire playing field, uh, and, and it's, 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 it brings a cost down. It's just, it's just a good idea. Um, another thing is uh, sustainability, and, and of course sustainability is one of the, I mean, one that has uh, been for the last 10 years, I mean, uh, of course with climate change, uh, everything has been uh, uh, on top of agenda, all of the SDGs and, and, and I mean, sustainable development goals. Um, and, and I don't want to really talk about sustainability in that sense, because all of you, I'm sure you know it, uh, uh, but there is something at stake. As uh, the Secretary General of the UN said, um, said, well, our world as we know it, and the future we want is at risk. Mm. 
So it is truly important. And one of the things that also is <coughs> Denmark is a small country. Uh, but um, what we did in Denmark is we combined all, all our resources, said what, how can Denmark actually contribute to the world? So because so we, we are a small country in size, uh, but as Obama said, sustainable Denmark punch above its weight. I don't know if he said it's to anyone else, but we, 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 we said it's definitely something that we, we, wanna, uh, uh, we, we, we like it and we really want to take part of it. And, and, and so uh, this is a uh, uh, power draw, uh, bro, uh, 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 sort of uh, project um, uh, draw, drawdown. And basically, these are some of the best scientists, best uh, business uh, industry leaders saying, well, what can we actually do? And the, the thing is to mitigate uh, climate change. And some of the key solutions is both the combinations of innovation, technology, and behavioral changes. And what Denmark did, say, where is our strongholds? How can we actually contribute to the world? Saying, perhaps we're not, not, in, we're not big in size, but we have know-how, we have experience, we have, we have some competences, we actually can contribute to the world so uh, uh, we, can be, we can spearhead this together. And you know, it's wind turbines, it's regenerative agriculture, it's conservative agriculture, and wind turbines all, I mean both offshore and onshore, and, 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 and refrigerant management. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, these, and one of the things that, that is mind-boggling to me is the blue is about technology. Mm. But the green is about behavior. Mm. How do we actually... And, and behavior, how do, you, how do you go about that? Well, that could be regulatory affairs. Mm. And Denmark absolutely have a stronghold in how do we actually regulate, how do we create policies that, that, that uh, uh, mitigate the climate change. And, and so actually what we did is saying we, we try to make an assessment in Denmark, say, how can we contribute? And actually what, what we find is that our contribution, our strongholds, is technology and know-how, it's commercial maturity and regulatory frameworks. Mm -hmm. this, this is something we really want to go and have a conversation uh, with all, all partners around the world because this is where we actually have something to offer. We have something to offer also, Denmark, different places, but it is not really a stronghold if we're just as good as some, some other country and they have so much more mass, so much bigger than us. Mm. So we have to find where we're truly unique, where we actually can, can, can make a difference. And it is the industries, I don't know if you can see this, yeah, uh, can you see this? <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, there's some, some of the industries and, and mm. what we looked at is the current strongholds. And I know you behind the screens and, and all the, the strategic partners uh, that, that collaborate with Denmark are, are really into the, the current strongholds where we actually really want to do have, have an impact. And, and you can read it over there. But what we're interested in is also what is the future strongholds of Denmark? Where can we actually uh, do something together where, where we, we go into a partnership where both of us learn? And, 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 and you can see uh, um, when you look at the future over here, it, it is how do we apply uh, data, the back end, uh, what, how can we use blockchains in energy efficiency? And, and one, of the, one of the things we're really interested in is the idea of power to X. And it's so hard to explain. And you asked me to do it, and it's very unfair. But one of the things we really want to, want to, want to and we have great uh, know-how experience doing right now is, and just to... In, in, uh, uh, in layman terms, it is how do you actually take alternative energy sources like wind turbines, uh, uh, solar farms, and use electricity into a process where you get uh, green uh, hydrogen as fuel. Then you can storage it, you can use it as jet fuel for transportation, mm -hmm. and that is something we really, really are looking uh, into. But we have so uh, even though we do this, and this is our primary focus, we cannot forget about all the other sustainability goals. <clears throat> so how, what, what, what does this require? And what, what it is, it, we, I do think, Annette, we, we, we need to start thinking about partnerships in a new way. Mm -hmm. Because normally when you think partnerships in an old-fashioned way, it is we, we are commodity suppliers. Mm -hmm. but, but in, uh, and we think in value chains, in, in supply chains, and, I, and, and we, live, we, we live in a world that is that where the networks, we live in network societies. And so we have to rethink how we actually 
can be the best possible partner uh, for Turkey, for around the world. And, and, and with, with this, this survey that, that, that kind of <laughs> was intriguing to me, I'd like to share it with you. They said, well, how do companies actually invest? Mm -hmm. And what we see is the companies invest predominantly in product, new products. But we had the audacity to look at the value created afterwards, these projects. And people investing in products, new products, actually, in the end, say, well, the value creation is not that great. But people that actually say, well, we do investments, industrial investments in network and new business models. We don't do it as often. But when we do it, mm -hmm. when we engage in these industrial partnerships, we get bang for the buck. It's mm -hmm. a huge impact. So that means we need, and what we see is that we see clusters of, of industries coming together. How do we build new ecosystems where we go for supply uh, value chains to value networks, where we have a common theme, so what, this is what we're going to do, and we have to find uh, uh, a way to collaborate. And the way you collaborate in these partnerships is, of course, I mean, in Denmark, you have to be trust, we have to trust each other. We have to have complete transparency, open, uh, uh, we, have an, uh, we need to have an openness, and we have to, to engage as equal partners, and we also have to have the agenda, how do we innovate together? And, and, uh, and that's, that's so, in, in that sense, uh, one of the agendas is how do we form these innovation uh, partnerships? Uh, and, and, and it's in the making, but also, um, I see a little sign, I have, I have to close down now. Uh, but, but I mean, it's, it's an interesting, interesting world because, because um, uh, um, our organizations has to change also. For order, order for us to do this, we, we, we have to come to terms that how we organize our world, how we organize our, 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 our businesses is changing. Also the workplace, that we have to think that, that, that we, we, we open our, our, our workplaces up. So uh, we, the role of a workplace is not just a place where you work. It's kind of a tool where you actually drive innovation, where you drive uh, certain behavior that will support uh, 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 the strategic goals you have. And, and with these uh, words, I will kind of say, well, um, the future arrives before you know it. Um, wow. Thank you so much <laughs> for allowing me to come and have this brief, brief, fast introduction to future studies and the importance of, of, of uh, how do we apply the strongholds, what strongholds have we identified uh, within the sustainable agenda uh, as an offering, as, as a service. And, and uh, uh, thank you so much, Annette, for inviting me and to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I hope for the viewers behind the screens it makes sense. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Thomas. Wow, um, I'm, uh, I'm blown away with uh, inspiration. Um, one of the things uh, that you said in the beginning about the four uh, parameters and that mm. uh, both organizations and governments and companies tend to focus on one, that's really one thing I'm going to take with me in my mm. work uh, at the consulate in, in Istanbul and with our partners. And the other thing is, is strategies. Because I, I think you're spot on there, you know, we're all focusing on one strategy that we will then go and apply and then before you know it, it's actually idle and you have to change to the new strategy. So, so having the, the luxury of looking at mere, you know, more strategies and more yeah. opportunities, I think that's really important. Um, well, you said a lot of fantastic things, of course, and, and standing here and listening, I'm so happy that we have it all recorded so I can watch it again, so I can actually <laughs> remember uh, uh, some of all the, the super things you said. And uh, finishing off with partnerships, I think this is also one of the most important uh, works that we do at the consulate. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to, with the uh, embassy in Ankara and our strategic partnership with the Danish uh, and the Turkish government and our Danish companies, we actually really try to live SGG number 17, which is about partnerships, and, yeah. and try to go out there and together from all these angles, uh, go and inspire the stakeholders in Turkey to uh, adopt mm. a new greener uh, energy agenda, which is oh, super nice to be yeah. part of. So um, with this, Thomas, thank you so much. Thank you to all of you out there watching. It has been an enormous pleasure to be here today uh, with you. 
If you have any questions for Thomas, uh, if you have any comments or anything you want, go to our Facebook site or our uh, Instagram or here on the YouTube channel and please let us know and we will do our very best to, uh, to answer everything that you uh, want to know or is interested in. You know where you can find Thomas? At the Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies. You know where you can find me? At the Royal Danish uh, Consulate General in Istanbul. With that, have a fantastic day, great weekend and thank you all for following this. Bye bye. Cheers, bye. Jeg fik det gik sgu da pisse godt. Du fik ikke meget hurtigt. Jo, men det gik da pisse godt. Don't you think it went well? Yeah. It was so okay, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I was really great. Yeah, you, you. I'm a little sweaty now. Really yes, yes. <laughs> no, it went super. But actually, it was perfect timing.